How's it going, man? I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, thanks for and doing this. And congrats on your record. And, Thank and you. uh had a good time listening to it yesterday. I appreciate it. Thank a lot you. Of, uh, a lot of life, a lot of fire red, all your notes on, on everything. The, the common denominator that I kept getting was a lot of this stuff was made to do live. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, know. you know, last year I put out my debut album in January and played about 80 shows last year. So last year was the first time that I really got to meet and start meeting my fans, you know, uh, in person and playing shows and mm -hmm. seeing what they're connecting with and resonating with and, and being on the road so much, I, I brought writers out with me a lot of the times and 11 of the songs on this album were written on the road. So we were literally coming off stage, channeling that energy and, uh, getting back on the bus and, and writing songs, um, that were basically created to play live and created for the fans. So, so yeah, it's a cool, it's a cool project. I'm really excited to have it out. It's a lot of fun. And I uh, can't wait to take this one on the road. I wanted to ask you, because this happened to me a lot, and Ronnie, too. I know Play Something Country, he walked off stage going, dun, 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 you know, just right off the stage. Right. I mean, you ever just walk off stage with a great song idea? Uh, I don't have any stories like that, exactly like that. But I would say, you know, like I said, a lot of these songs, you just pull from the fans, pull from the energy. Look at the set list, realize, man, what's kind of missing in there? What would I like to do? What do I think the fans would like to hear? Uh -huh. and so, and having writers out that are also watching the show and watching the fans and also taking mental notes of like, so usually it's later that night or the next day, we're kind of like sussing it out, talking about how, how last night went, what the fans were connecting with, and uh, kind of tossing around ideas. But I don't have any, I don't really have any stories where I just, <laughs> Had a genius idea on the, during the show. It usually takes all my mental capacity just to remember the songs <laughs> I'm playing. So, uh, anyways. Well, I know you got to, when you do come off a stage, you got to have that energy. Mm -hmm. I mean, isn't it hard to walk in the room and not just pick up a guitar? It I is. I mean, sometimes. Yeah, yeah that's, it is. Uh, do you have a regular routine? Like, me and DePiro, we get up in the morning, we have about three cups of coffee, we write for about 45 minutes, then we take a nap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then we get up and I we like write that. for I about like an hour strategy. and a half, then we take a nap. I need to uh, co-write with you guys. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> we call it throwing one in the gap, you know. Yeah. That's what, <laughs> when we start mouth breathing, you know, we can't think of anything. It's like, let's go lay down oh, for a minute. Good. You know? I need a little yeah. nap. Have I'm you got a regular routine for writing? Yeah, if I'm on the road, I uh, get up, get some movement in, try to get a workout of some capacity, get my brain going, eat some breakfast, and then usually try to start writing about 10 o'clock or so. And uh, the best thing about being on the road is just kind of the there's not a lot of distractions. Mm -hmm. You know, I hunker down on the bus with the guys, and we just get after it. And it's, uh, it's a lot of fun, and sometimes we'll – We'll write through lunch. We'll usually have some food on the bus, and we'll just eat and keep rocking. And usually by 2 or 3 o'clock, we're ready for a break, and we'll go do something outside. Hopefully, if the weather's nice, we'll just get some fresh air and go uh, mix it up for a second and let the brain rest. But uh, but no naps. Actually, I take that back. I usually try to finish a song and then in time to take a nap. I'm looking at my watch like, okay, because I love a good power nap midday, uh -huh. especially oh, yeah. if you got a show that night. So uh, that's kind of what my routine looks like. On a good day, I can – Write a song, let the guys kind of suss it out while I'm taking a nap about three or four o'clock, and then uh, wake up and see what they've done, sing the demo, and get ready for meet and greet. That's cool. So y'all take like a portable studio out, or you got something on your bus? Yeah, or I usually uh, usually bring guys that have a little portable rig of some capacity. You write with a lot of guys can... that do track writing, you know, where they yeah. kind of you get a demo kind of going. You don't have any trouble thinking when you got. <clears throat> When you got music and drum machines, or is it sometimes you in? it can paint you in a corner, you mm -hmm. know? So we're pretty aware of that. A lot of times we'll start with just guitars, um, so that we're not in any capacity bound by the track. Um, <clears throat> and a lot of times they'll start from scratch. We'll get we'll write the song on guitar, and then they'll start building it out as once it's kind of sussed out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I prefer doing it that way because yeah, when you when you start with a track. Sometimes it works great, and sometimes it sort of corners you a bit, and you kind of can't get out of it. So uh, that's kind of how I prefer to do it. But having some of these guys out with me, you can start a song on guitar, go take a nap, and by the time you're up, they got a full demo almost produced, ready to send a mix, it feels like. you know. So it's just like a ready to send to the radio, really. And you get re-inspired. So then you're re-inspired, and you're like, man, this song – really turned into something great and then you know at the end of the weekend you got five or six songs that have great demos and uh really you know that makes it fun because then you can just blast them and 
you know, enjoy them and uh, kind of feel the song, you know. Yeah. Love your new single. Really do. Thanks. Uh, I love nostalgia. Mm -hmm. You know, I think obviously a lot of the great songs in the history of our, our business, you know, are, are looking back at the way things were. And totally. Of course, we hear it all the time, you know. It ain't like it used to be. No, it right. ain't. But <clears throat> some of the greats told me that, it ain't never been like it used to right. be. Right. <laughs> ain't no thing. Merle Haggard, Buck Owens, they all laughed about that very thing. Right. You know? Buck talked about getting booed off the stage of the Grand Ole Opry for playing a Telecaster. He said, now wow. everybody thinks that's old school country. You know? Right. Wow. So, it you know, it's always evolving, isn't it? Yeah. You're starting over, really. Yeah. Besides, you're on your own. What's, what's the difference that you're really feeling with? Because you've started now two careers. I feel like a lot of times... I was subconsciously concerned about overshadowing BK, maybe, you know, and very s self-conscious about, well, I'm kind of the lead singer, so I won't, I won't invest as much into the band guys, or I won't be the leader. Maybe. Let's just call it being a good leader. I mm -hmm. won't be the leader that I feel like I need to be because I don't want to, I'll let BK do that, or I'll let BK do this, or I don't want to overshadow. And so I didn't really realize that until I stepped out on my own and, and felt this ultimate freedom of, man, I can be fully myself. I can lead the way I want to lead. I can create the culture that feels most authentic to me and the culture that I want to be around and the guys I want to be around. I can invest in everyone's life without feeling like I'm trying to overshadow BK or be a better boss than BK or mm -hmm. be a better leader than B or any of those things. So it's it was uh, obviously it's a little challenging at first, stepping into the unknown, stepping into something new, Um but it allowed me to do a lot of kind of self-discovery myself. And what do I want? Who do I want to be as an individual? Who do mm -hmm. I want to be as, how do I want uh, my spirit, my heart to be reflected to the world? And, and how do I want to build the culture around me that makes people excited to leave their home and be out on the road with me, you know? And the sacrifice that we all kind of sacrifice to do what we do but um, is real. But if you have a great culture and uh, great people around you, then it's fun and people are excited mm -hmm. and inspired and motivated and thankful so that's kind of the heart behind the culture that i'm that i'm working on building and it's just it's been a lot of fun man i mean it's been um really reinvigorating man i got new energy new excitement new joy and it's a new challenge you know it's something that uh i think i needed just to you know reignite that creative energy and mm -hmm. reignite the passion and playing some of these smaller clubs and going back to where I fell in love with it the first time, you know, it's, it's been really, really cool. It's a <laughs> gift, man. So I, uh, I'm in a great place and, uh, having a whole lot of fun with it. It does. And, and whether, you, I think Ronnie would say the same thing, whether you get back together or whatever, it, I think it really does strengthen your soul when you figure out a way to have a partnership and you kind of divide all the things that you're talking yeah. about just to go back and rekindle that place inside yourself like no i i am my own guy right. too you know yeah. it's like you got it just gives you something stronger to bring back to any table yeah you know in my whole career i mean i've always been a package deal it's always been me and bk and you know you you, f you figure out that people almost look at you as one person even though you're two people right one entity one thing and and that's great at the time but it was it is nice to be able to step into my own individuality and connect with the fans on a personal level. Yeah. You know? I know with, with Ronnie and I, it was, I was talking to somebody, both of us were somebody in the studio the other day and it kind of, it, it almost jagged me a little bit when, cause they were saying, so if y'all are doing solo stuff, cause it was a band, how, so how do you know whose stuff you can do and whatever like that? I said, mm -hmm. well, you know, a song like neon moon, I said, I wouldn't, People want me to sing that in Boot Scoot and Boogie or whatever. I said, I'm generally not going to do that. Ronnie wrote those songs. He sang on those songs, wrote them by himself. Wow. And I don't want anybody yeah. to think that I'm taking credit for that, especially being a songwriter, right. you know, that kind of. Ronnie Dunn's standing there. He goes, he said, KB, you're part of that song. He goes, you can sing that song if you want right. to go. I'm not singing that song. Right? <laughs> I'm not doing it because I don't want anybody to ever say that. Uh, he's taking credit. But but anyway, I guess the, the question that I'm really kind of getting around to is, so as a new artist, and we know in today's world, hell, it can take a year for a single to go right. up. Yours have been moving pretty good, but still you got two songs now after two years. Right. And, it's, it's... 
and you're working on it. So when you're building a set list, doing covers or whatever, how do you look at that? Do you look at FGL or do you look at uh, do you look at Eric Clapton and the Rolling Stones or you know well, what? You know, well, how do you, like how do you play? How do you put your set list together? I try to have a balance. I try to give the fans as much new material as I as I think they can digest, mm-hmm. but at the same time. Give them a little taste of the past. You know, I talk about writing crews and how that song changed my life and how I'm so grateful for the last decade. And then, you know, I invite them into taking the journey back 10 years and let's go sing this one together. And then um, and then I sing Meant to Be as well and tell the story about writing that with BB. But that's the only two songs I do with it, of is FGL. It? And, uh, and, it's in, and I also play some other outside songs. I play uh, Make It Easy quite a bit, the Al Dean song that I wrote. And oh, just cool. to kind of explain to the audience my heart as a songwriter, you yeah. know, and not just my own music, but uh, FGL songs, Al Dean songs, stuff like that that they're familiar with. Mm-hmm. And so it is important to, you know, you give them a couple unfamiliar songs, uh-huh. maybe new ones, and then hit them with a hit, you know. And I try to just keep it balanced so that they can sing along, so they can feel like a part of the show. And that's always, for me as a songwriter, you know this, there's nothing more rewarding than, than yeah. seeing people sing the songs you wrote back to you and – uh so, yeah, I like to do that, and, and I want people to still remember where I came from. I want to pay an ode and a respect to, you know, those songs, that season of my career, BK, mm-hmm. and just being able to uh, talk about that openly and play a few songs. And I told BK the same thing. I said when we first started, it was like we actually had that conversation, like, uh-huh. are we going to sing FGL songs? So, you know, and I, and I kind of said, dude, you have the free – you can sing whatever you want to sing, and, I can, and I'll sing whatever I want to sing, but ultimately I didn't want to – People aren't coming to hear FGL songs. They're coming to hear my songs, and I and I love that. But at the same time, it's fun to give them a throwback, give them just yeah. a little trip down memory lane, if you will. That sounds like a good journey for the fans. Yeah, it's fun. And this album, I mean, it's like everything in there's got energy. Even even mm-hmm. your your Beatles seventy threes. Mm-hmm. It's all got it's all got good energy. Thanks. That's the thing. You know, you can sometimes listen to an album and go. Be careful about playing that one live. That might be a pee break. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, because right. we tell ourselves that, you right. know, when we're going through it, it's like, let's take this out of the set. You know, totally. we got it. We got enough things that keep people rocking. Live action is a, a different mentality yeah, for sure. It really is. Of, of your tempos. And I think uh, one of the things I read uh, that you wrote, maybe Vegas was one mm-hmm. that you you felt like kind of had, when you write something and you go, it's going to be fun live, mm-hmm. you know, that's a great feeling. Yeah, that was one of those songs, too, you know. It's kind of a mid-tempo, but it's got some, it's got a cool concept, you know, kind of that love at first sight thing, and uh, everybody really resonates with that one. It's it's kind of been a lot of people's favorites, so mm-hmm. it's fun to play that one live. It's fun to, we've started playing Wish You Would, and we started playing Turn, and a lot with a little. So really giving... Um, the fans and insight into what's to come and the new album before it's before it's even out. So it's been fun. It was good work, man. It's, it's all jamming. I really had a fun time going through. I'm like, that means nope, a lot. Nope. Well, there's another one. He's doing it. <laughs> thanks, man. That means a lot. Thank you so hey, much. Hey, thanks for coming by, pal. Of course, anytime. I feel like Appreciate me and you probably it. need to go have about a three hour dinner somewhere and just. I know. Pick each other's It'd brain. It'd be a good a therapy I, session. I'd love to learn from you. So, anyways, yeah, <laughs> no, thank we you. can learn from each other, thank man. Thank you very much. Life's like that. That is very true. Right, thanks.